there I'm going to begin in a few minutes. Whoever Good luck, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Whoever has the uh, co-host uh, rights, if you see everyone, anyone waiting in the room, please admit them. I'm just trying to launch the recording also on our YouTube channel. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are very happy to welcome you here this morning. I'm just launching a recording. Continue. Okay, go live. Okay. I'm not sure this is going to work, but we are still recording it in our cloud. So we have already 39 people here. Okay, let's give it another few minutes. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. People. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to begin in just a few minutes. We are still expecting some guests. Really, really exciting. So I'll share the welcome screen one more time for just another couple of minutes. And we are just waiting for everyone to join. In the meantime, we would like to know where you join us from, right? The country where you are at right now. Say hi in the chat. We will make you join. Oh, welcome, Jason. Welcome, Where are you from? Where are you at? Please share your location. I think you can write, yeah, in the chat? Yeah, okay. Works, it works. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Please write your country. Where are you from? We have people from different countries who joined us this morning for this exciting event. Ukraine, Slovenia, Israel, of course. Nice, Maribor, University of Maribor. Good morning, good morning. We have guests from Poland. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Wonderful, okay. Hey, excellent. Okay, I'm going to stop the music and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will welcome everyone officially to begin the conference the first uh, international student conference about AI. Okay, so hopefully we already have 50 uh, guests and now the, uh, okay, people can also join without special permission. So we are all set to begin. I'm gonna stop sharing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Thank you Good for morning. joining. This morning, we are very excited to uh, invite you to our student conference about AI tools. Uh, we are here in Israel, in Haifa, Technion students, and I'm their lecturer, Dr. Elena Mizrahi. I'm very happy to present this project, this initiative, as part of the international collaboration. We are uh, participating in the Impact uh, Virtual Exchanges uh, project, and uh, some of you guys yeah, are, for sure. are here from uh, from Impact, from from this network of uh, European, Moroccan, and Israeli universities and institutions. So uh, we are really interested in AI. I guess this is the reason may, many of you, so many of you, are here. Uh, the, this new world is really, really dynamic. This is not something you can actually teach and learn in one course, right? So we decided to take a different approach and my students and I are just exploring the vast like, uh, ocean of new tools and technology options that were released, have been released recently. 
And uh, we are going to show you some of the insights, some of our use cases, particularly my students will take you into their world, into their student eyes and how they are already using and leveraging AI. And they will also share with you some ideas of how they envision this field uh, in the future, the development of the use of AI and you know different aspects, different areas. Please um, be actively involved with us. If you have any questions, you can write your questions uh, in the chat. We will be happy to have a discussion later on if we have enough time. Our program uh, begins with uh, two of my students, Ali and Abed, who will present the use cases of AI in the student life. How does AI simplify students' university life? We will then move on to the next presentation by Tal and Karen. Tal and Karen will uh, talk about cracking the code and how uh, using AI can make your coding better. We have we do have a few uh, representatives from si from uh, computer science. We know that uh, some of the guests also, some of the attendees are also from computer sciences, but uh, who, even if you're not, you will be interested to hear how students use uh, current tools with, uh, with their assignments and, and uh, different tasks. The next talk is gonna be about AI in entertainment, uh, social media and content creation. And I'm not gonna mention the last talk right now, but it's gonna be a surprise, re something really, really interesting. So lots uh, to look forward to. Stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of content, uh, very dynamic, a lot of information. Uh, again, if you have questions, just uh, keep them uh, and uh, like keep notes, take notes, or write them in the chat, and we will have some Q&A towards the end of the event. Okay. Thank you very much for your for joining again and let's begin. Let's begin with the first presentation. Ali and Ahmed, you can begin sharing your screen and uh, we're yep. starting now. Thank you, Elena. I'm gonna start sharing. There we go. Can you see? Yes, excellent. Uh, hold on, can you see the Zoom thing at the top? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, but you moved it a little bit up, so it's fine. I'm gonna move it here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we, uh, Today, we're going to be talking about leveraging AI for work-life balance in university. Um, I'm going to be talking about how I leverage AI to, like, in uh, stress situations, and Ali is going to be talking about uh, how he uses AI in general in university, in his uh, university life. Uh, before we begin, my name is uh, Abed Naran. I'm uh, 22 years old from uh, Israel. I'm a computer science and math student at the Technion in my eighth semester. I work at the Computer Graphics Lab. Uh, as a software developer, where I uh, develop different computer graphics algorithms and uh, help with research wherever I can. Uh, Yawad Ali, it's uh, your turn. Thank you, Abed. Uh, my name is Ali. I'm 22 years old from Israel. I'm studying computer science at the Technion and working as a computer engineer at NVIDIA. In my role, I test the functionality of the chips that are produ produced using different AI tools that I develop. Thank you. OK. College life is more advanced compared to high school. Students not only have to deal with bigger academic workload, harder homework, but they are expected to function socially, plan financially, and deal with living away from home for the first time. Yeah, uh, in this talk, we're gonna be touching on stress. Uh, we're gonna be discussing uh, how we can use different AI tools to mitigate it. Uh, as you can see here in the diagram, uh, uh, like almost 50% of uh, students have more than average stress, which, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make much sense. So I think we could uh, use AI tools to improve that or try to, uh, you know, at least help with it. Uh, before we start, we'd like to uh, to share our experiences, our personal, like personal stories about uh, how we have uh, dealt with stress and how we have encountered it. So uh, please, Ali, please uh, start with your story. Thank you, Abed. Okay. A year ago, I decided to take on a project in AI and machine learning. When I started, I quickly realized that I didn't understand the basic concepts of machine learning, and my Python skills weren't that good. I felt stuck with so many other courses and homework assignments. I didn't have to learn Python and machine learning from scratch. My first reaction was to panic. I thought about dropping the course, but we were in the middle of the term, and I couldn't do that. So I panicked again. But then it hit me. We're in the edge of AI. It's not like back in 2015 when we had to figure everything out on our own. Now I can use AI tools, always available helper, ready to guide me through the challenges of my project. 
And now Abid will present uh, his experience. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's definitely stressful having to learn new things. Uh, for me, it's kind of different. And uh, in this semester, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in my rush to graduate. I need to finish. I'm in my eighth semester. So I uh, decided to take a heavy workload. Uh, about five courses that are very hard. They're heavier than usual for me. Maybe for you, it's a, it's a lot easier. Other way, um, I also work two days a week, at least two days a week. It can be more sometimes. So I uh, think of this. I have I live alone in my own apartment. I have to cook for myself. I have to work on five courses at the same time and also balance that with work. So uh, for me personally, it felt like any step forward I take in any of these um, activities, I, I go backwards in another one. So it's uh, it didn't make sense. At the start, I was very stressed. I wasn't organized at all. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking, hey, I need to write a schedule. And um, at that point, I knew about AI. I knew it's a thing. I knew it could help me. So I'm like, okay. I'm gonna use AI tools to help me mitigate the stress, help me plan things out and write my own schedule. And uh, I'm gonna show you in my expert, like later on in the talk, I'm gonna show you how I use that and how it uh, really helped me. Uh, uh, for a minute, I'd like you to uh, answer uh, the first question in this chat, or if you wanna like go into uh, voice, feel free. From zero to 10, how stressed are you with university? Yeah, That's, let's begin with the sorry. first question first, right? So. Uh, in the chat, can you please write uh, on this on a scale from zero to ten? How stressed are you right now with your university life? <laughs> <laughs> because then there is another question. Uh, yeah, we'll give you ten seconds to answer. Okay. Oh, I can't see the chat, mm -hmm. so if, if you could let me know, like uh, the answers. We, we mm -hmm. can. We we need them to compare by the country. I think there is a country. <laughs> uh aspect of of the scores that we're getting okay yeah. thank you for sharing and... <laughs> okay and uh second question from zero from zero to ten how much can ai tools help with mitigating stress good question who knows <laughs> that's what we're talking about but yeah. i'd like to you know get an idea what they think <laughs> if anyone wants to add anything feel free to unmute yourself Right. Should we move forward? Yes, I guess we have a variety of uh, answers uh, for one. <laughs> well, I can see the chat, so it would help if you like let me know uh, like the yeah. type of answers we're getting. Oh yeah, we are getting all sorts of answers from I don't know to like one, four, ten, nine, eight. So some people are really optimistic, <laughs> and some people don't even know where to begin and how even it can help. Right. I see. Well, we're going to help you with that. We're going to start with uh, why we think using AI is useful in this domain. Um, if you like, if you please, Ali, please start with the first point. Uh, okay. yep. Thank you, Abed. Okay. AI is available 24-7. I, like many other students, work on my homework late at night. If, and if I run into a question, I like to get the answer right away, not wait till the next day to get the answer. All my friends are asleep, and I don't want to disturb the teaching assistant by emailing them at 4 a.m., that's when I turn to my AI tools, like ChatGPT and Gemini, who are always available 24-7. This way, I don't have to wake anyone up or wait till the next day to get the answer for my question. Uh, to be honest, this is not always the case. Sometimes I didn't get the answer that I want from, uh, from the AI tool. So in this case, I turn to my friend, the AI man, and wake him up at 2 a.m. in the morning, who will be presenting also today. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely challenging with uh, having to ask different questions. So it's always helpful to have someone there, someone for you, someone you can turn to. Uh, another point is that uh, AI can be tailored to the like to the user's personality. I personally, when I ask questions, uh, like I usually ask questions about stress, and when I ask them, I expect the advice to be direct and uh, forward. I don't want someone to like beat around the bush and like try to be you know emotional with me. So I, I really want just I have a problem, give me the solution. Other users might be different. Someone else might be a bit more emotional and that they need someone with like a motherly touch when they give them advice. And the AI is very good for that. You can easily tell it, hey, uh, like for example, in the, for chat GPT, you can tell it, hey, I'd like, uh, I'd like advice to be given in this way for me, please. Another option is you can even have a custom built AI for uh, different personalities. Like uh, you can have a therapist AI that uh, that deals uh, like with certain types of therapy. So it helps with... Uh, so it helps certain users. Another AI could deal with other types of therapy. And uh, yeah, uh, all in all, it's very custom. It's very extendable. It, it solves a lot of problems. 
Uh, onward to the third point. Go ahead, Ali. Okay. Thank you, Abel. Okay, AI provides a judgment-free environment. Sometimes I hesitate to ask questions to a teaching assistant or a friend, fearing they might find them silly, laugh at it, or leave a bad impression. But that's not the case with AI. AI interactions are designed to be private because they are programmed to handle your questions privately. They, this is how they were coded, without judging and sharing them with anyone else, ensuring your conversation remains confidential and free from any embarrassment. Uh, move on, Alan. Okay, yeah. this is a question that I had in my first year as a college student at the Technion. Like, I couldn't send an email to a professor, a computer science professor at the Technion, asking him how to do a loop in a Python, in a Python coding in a Python code. This is a very basic question. Now, with AI, I don't have to hesitate to ask that. I don't have to send an email to my professor. I just, with one click, you can ask ChatGPT to give you the answer, even if it's a silly question. Even in the when it comes to mental health, it's uh you know you, usually when you need mental health advice, you're very vulnerable, you're very sensitive, and uh, you want to be open with someone. And with AI, it's very easy, especially like because of this reason, because you're not gonna get judged. It will give you very objective advice, and it will gladly help you. Uh, moving on to the third point, well, AI is uh it's, it's based on machine learning. It is machine learning. That means that um uh, let's assume a specific scenario where we have a therapist AI like dealing with uh, stress, for example and different users are asking different questions and responding to the AI's response in different ways. The AI can collect that data and learn from it so that when uh, new users come in, they, they get the most up-to-date data and they get the, the best solution that the AI can provide. Um, yeah, uh, moving on to the last point, which is mind scalability. Uh, AI is, is very uh, scalable. What that means is um, imagine we have uh, thousands of students stressed out about their university and they they need the counsel, they need professional help. And, you know, it's not, the situation is right now is if you want professional help, you're gonna have to wait at least eight, like three or eight months to get, get what you need. With AI, it can uh, it can help with that shortage where it can uh, like help uh, thousands of students at the same time. Of course, I'm being highly optimistic here. I'm not saying AI can replace therapy. I'm saying it can supplement it, it can aid it. We're gonna talk about that uh, in a bit. We're gonna talk about the uh, negatives and, uh, will show that uh, there's more to it than this. Other way, we'd like to uh, present our experiences with using AI tools and uh, I'll present how it helped me with dealing with uh, stress and Ali will present his uh, his general use cases for uh, coursework and university. So Ali, please uh, go ahead with your- Thank uh, you, Abed. Okay, the main use cases for me for AI is first, nowadays I barely write emails by myself. I don't, I don't want to worry about the grammar. I just want to, send the email and get it over with. For example, you can see in this photo, I tell ChatGPT to write the email in better English, and it will give me, a, if you focus, you can see that there are some grammar mistakes. I don't want to worry about that. I just want to send the email. So ChatGPT gives me a well-structured email without any grammar mistakes. But sometimes, you know, you, you don't get the email that you want in the first try. So I sometimes ask it to rephrase it and give me another email, another one, and another one until I get the email that I want. Mm -hmm. And the second use case for me is uh, sometimes in a, the courses that I take, they ask me to download an app before I start the, the course. I don't want to spend the time learning about how to use, how to download the app. I'd rather spend this time on learning how to use the app, not how to download it. Three years ago, I had to go to Google and uh, tell Google, help me, how can I download this app? And it, uh, I go to a lot of websites, different websites, and it will take many hours. Now, again, with one simple click, I can ask ChatGPT, tell me how do I download this app? And it will give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to download it. And if I ran into an error, in this, for example, in this case, I just copy the error and tell ChatGPT, instead of copying it to Google and going to a lot of websites, and the second, uh, the third use cases, I, I didn't mention it here, but uh, because first two students are going to talk about it today, it's, is that um, AI sometimes helped me with my coding. I can't get into much detail because uh, I'm afraid that the teaching assistant is going to watch it. So I, I leave it to Tal and Karen. All right. Uh, going back to your point about uh, iteration, like having to being critical um it's also very uh it's also critical in the context of uh, mental health and stress mitigation because uh in my example uh 
I use AI to create uh, different schedules for like different daily schedules for me because I have, a, like I said, I have a lot of courses. So here as an example, I'm telling it uh, the type, like the courses that I'm taking and that I have to do two days of work, two days of work a week, sorry. And, you know, I want a schedule so that I can uh, be more organized and I can know what I'm going to do like in the following week or in the following days. At the, at the bottom, you can see me asking for uh, help with stress. Um, when I asked this question, I was very stressed out. <laughs> So I, I needed like some uh, light advice from the AI. Other way, here's the answer. Like as expected, it gives me an answer. Of course, as you'd expect, the first answer is not always a good answer. So uh, there was a lot of iteration, which I'll touch on a bit in a bit. Um, it gives me the schedule. It's, uh, it's very organized. It's uh, it's really good for the most part. <laughs> Here, uh, like, I, like I showed in the question, um, I asked for tips on how to handle stress. Of course, you can see these tips and go. Hey, you, you could have you could have went on Google and just asked the same question and gotten an answer. Of course, I mean that's not what I'm going for here. Uh, what I need is uh someone that will listen, someone I can vent to. Of course, he gives me objective advice, but there's uh like, I didn't show it here because it's highly personal. Like sometimes you wanna vent to someone, you wanna talk to someone. It's like when uh when you write in a diary. Well, the difference between AI and a diary is AI is actually answering your questions and like it's responding to you, you're having a conversation. I think that's very critical. It, it can help. It really has helped me a lot. Like, um, you know, you're stressed out. You, you got a huge assignment uh, next day and you don't know what to do. So you come to AI, you're like, you know, you, you can yell at it. You can tell it your problems. It will, it will gladly help. It doesn't care. It's a very safe environment. And I think it can uh, it can improve uh, like my life and other people's lives. Here, uh, sorry. Here, like I'm, uh, I'm showing off that AI is AI. Like, do you remember in my last schedule? Of course it does. Uh, it's not a human that I was not going to think about. I will instantly be like, oh, okay, I remember. Here's the schedule I gave you. And at the bottom, I'm showing off that you have to iterate. You have to uh, like change what it gives you. So I worked with the first schedule it gave me for a few days. I'm like, okay, this, this doesn't work. So uh, please give me something new. It's uh, It didn't work. And it will gladly give me new advice on how to handle stress. And it will also uh, you know, propose, hey, do you want a new schedule? How can I help you with that? And here, exactly, it's what I'm doing. Um, hey, I'm, I need more hours on courses, 10 plus hours a day. Please uh, adjust the schedule. It will do that. I have a big homework coming up. Please also adjust it, and it will also do that. Again, oh, sorry. Uh, again, at work, I have a big project of work coming up next week. I might need to work uh, three to four days a week. Please make the schedule central around that and give me enough time to study, and it, it will always do that. My point here is... Uh, of course, I can do this on my own, but my point here is that uh, it will do it for me instantly. I don't have to think about making a schedule. I could be worrying about something else. It will give me the schedule. I will look at it, and I will adjust it accordingly. I, I just have to iterate. I don't have to think, which is very helpful because, uh, you know, thinking about, like, the amount of work that you have to do sometimes can induce, like, you know, anxiety and stuff. So it's, uh, it's helpful to have someone do that for you, and uh, you just look at the final result and improve it. Of course, all these use cases, there. Uh, I give it a problem, it gives me a solution. This is how I used it. It's, I, I only seek objective advice. I don't, uh, like there's, I have like subjective, like I have uh, like emotional advice that it gave me, but I'm not showing it here because uh, honestly, it wasn't always the best. It's good for like having someone to like, that will listen to you, but it's not always good in the advice that it gives, like emotional advice I would give. Uh, we're gonna discuss that more in the potential pitfalls for uh, this method. Um, I think Ali will start. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Abed. Okay, one downside of using AI is the lack of human connection. Even though AI can help us a lot, it's important to remember that it wasn't designed to replace a human interaction. After all, humans are the one who created AI. Talking to an AI can be useful, but it doesn't understand emotion or build relationships the way humans do. So while AI is a great tool for solving your problems and answering your questions, it can't offer the warmth and deep understanding that comes from human contact. Sometimes they ask me at work, are you afraid that AI is going to replace you at work? Absolutely not. For me, artificial intelligence isn't that intelligent. So hopefully in the next, as I see the way I see it, in the next 15 years, hopefully I won't get replaced by a robot. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's going to be a long while. I hinted at this in my um, in my story for the experience. Um, it can't really replace a therapist. It can't replace a professional. It can give you objective advice. It will listen to your problems. But when it comes to giving actually like highly emotional advice on how to handle stuff, it's, it's not that good yet. And uh, I thought it will ever be. <laughs> uh, 
Second point, moving on. Um, well, AI is uh, trained on data, it's machine learning. And uh, if that data is not big enough or it's not diverse enough, it will obviously develop bias towards uh, certain opinions. Uh, this is critical when it comes to uh, mental health because if you are asking for mental health advice and your AI, like your AI friend or your therapist AI is uh, is giving highly biased uh, opinions, you're, it's gonna mess you up. It's gonna do more harm than good. Because uh, when you're asking for mental health advice, you're highly vulnerable. You're susceptible to any kind of advice I would give. So if you trust this person, if you trust this AI tool and it's not trained properly, it's, uh, it's gonna harm you a lot. What I'm trying to get at is, uh, when making therapist AIs or anything that has like anything sensitive like that, you have to be rigorous in the data that you train it on. You have to get show with a lot of data. You have to uh, constantly verify that it's good. Uh, I'm gonna touch on regulation in a bit after this. Uh, I will touch on the that AI should be regulated, especially this kind of AI. Other way, the third point is Ali, so please go mm -hmm. ahead. Thank you. Okay, AI doesn't fully grasp complex human emotions. It can process information and provide responses based on its code, based, based on how it was programmed. This means AI might, might not always give you the most appropriate or sensitive answer to more complicated or emotional question. As someone who has programmed AI robots before, I think it's impossible to make AI understand emotion the way humans do. So again, in my perspective for the next 20, 30 years, we won't see this happening. My point here is that for emotional questions, it's better to turn to a friend or a teaching assistant rather than ChatGPT, for example. Thank you. And the final point that I hinted at is uh, there's no there's no regulating body over uh, well there is over general AI but there's no regulating body over uh, like uh, mental health AI. Uh, as we know, mental health professionals are trained for years on end so that they give the most uh, objective and uh, the most correct advice. And AI doesn't have that. You can't really uh, trust an AI to be a good mental health professional. There's uh like imagine like every AI tool out there, every like anyone can come out there and be like, hey, I made this AI, it can help you with mental health, please use it. I think we need someone up there that will look at all, like not all, but like most AI tools and regulate them, give them licenses, be like, okay, this AI tool, we tested it on uh these uh situations, it can handle them perfectly. So here's a certification, people can use it. Uh there's also ethical problems of using AI as a uh, as therapist, I didn't touch on it here because uh, sadly we don't have that much time, but there's a lot of ethical problems that can arise. And yeah, um, I'm gonna have to summarize because uh, we're reaching the end of the talk. In short, AI tools are, uh, they're good as uh, mental health and uh, stress mitigating tools. You can use them to vent, you can use them to build schedules, you can use them for highly objective advice, for highly mechanical problem solving. Uh, again, it can't replace human creativity. If you need actual advice, if you're actually struggling, you should turn to a professional or to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. And the final point. And uh, as Abit said, it's essential to approach AI responses with a critical eye and use it as an aid rather than the, as a substitute for your own judgment and expertise. In my experience, JGBD doesn't always deliver the answers that I'm looking for and sometimes even gives incorrect information. This means I find myself engaging in extensive discussions with it, trying to refine my question, change it, clarify it, until I arrive to the correct answer. But this is not always the case. For example, you can see here, I tell ChatGPT to listen and stop giving me wrong answers and do what I told you. Uh, in this case, I just turned my, this is the conversation that happened. This is a fight that broke out between me and ChatGPT two days ago. In this case, I turned my computer off and uh, called Diamond again at 2 a.m. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ale. Uh, I hope I hope you had a interesting talk, everyone. It was a pleasure talking to you. Um, thank you again, and I we hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. Thank you very uh, do much. We do questions. Do we do questions now or after? I'm not sure. Yeah, we have one one minute, sixty seconds before the next yeah. talk. So if anyone has uh, go ahead. any questions, please go mm -hmm. ahead or comments. I would like to again stress the, the the summary that you provided. Really, really interesting. Uh, I think the way that some people sometimes take a, a view, a point of view that we should, you know, we are humans, the most creative, the most uh, uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, ultimate, you know, critical thinking machines. So we should not uh, let AI interfere with yeah. our lives. And some people just don't don't leverage AI at all. So I think on the one hand, you did present some interesting use cases of where you should be turning to AI to make your life easier, faster, to to actually have more time for more human uh, needed skills. On the other hand, again, uh, we're not there to to be replaced by AI in any means, right? Yeah. Um, Right. Thank you very much. So mm -hmm. we're moving on uh, to the next talk. If you uh, guys have any questions, I'm talking to the audience, uh, to Ali and Abed. We will also have a few minutes towards the end of the conference, so you will be able to answer uh, to ask your questions then. Mm -hmm. We're now moving on to the next talk by Tal and Karen. They will also introduce themselves uh, briefly before they dive into the topic of tracking the code. How using AI makes coding better. Yes, uh, thank you, Elena. I'll just share my screen. We can start. Yes, please. Let's see. Okay, we can see your screen. Five. Wonderful. Are you? Yeah, seeing? yeah. It looks it it looks great. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can right. see. Okay, so. Uh... Hello uh, to you all. Uh, I'm Tal. I'm an electrical engineering student from the Technion, now in my uh, last semester. Um, I want to start by asking you if you've ever needed to search something on Google and it just didn't understand you and you just wished you can explain yourself so it will give you what you are looking for. And I want you to think about that while I, I tell you that for me, that was my case uh, until ChatGPT was launched. And ever since then, I'm communicating with it on a daily basis. Uh, Karen, uh, now it. Okay, uh, thank you, Ta. Uh, yeah, my name is Karen, I'm 22 years old, and I'm currently on my fourth semester of the computer science in the Technion. And um, I also have a little question of my own, and that is about rejection. If any of you knows the feeling of fearing rejection. Now, for me, it was related to, well, when I first started programming, I didn't know much, and I turned to Stack Overflow to ask some of my questions and try to get some help from there. But instead of getting the help, I actually got a lot of criticism for the way that I asked the questions. And uh, that was very difficult for me to handle. And thankfully now uh, with the rise of AI technologies, I no longer need to have that strong fear of rejection when asking questions. Uh, so if Tal can move to the next slide. Okay, so first thing, what is AI? Now I'm sure a lot of you have known, a lot of you know what is AI, a lot of you have probably um, have some practice and experience with it, but yes, AI is basically, uh, the simulation of human intelligence done by machines, by computer systems. Uh, so it basically involves the ability of our machines to learn from data, to adapt to new inputs, and to perform tasks that would usually require human intelligence, writing, coding, creating images. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, yes, you you have all probably heard of ChatGPT, and well, ChatGPT is just one example of a chatbot. Uh, chatbots are AI uh, programs that can communicate and participate in a conversation just like a human being. And for example, in the United States, uh, people can order what they need from Amazon by simply talking to Alexa. And sim similarly, we have uh, online websites such as ChatGPT, Gemini, Perplexity, and, and and other uh, websites, and we can ask them basically anything, and they will give us uh, their response for the topic. Um, and when we specifically talking about chatbots and AI tools for coding, then we can see these four basic examples. Um, as mentioned before, we can ask ChatGPT and Gemini by Google. Uh, anything we want, and that includes code-related questions. Now, usually ChatGPT will give you a solution, while Gemini will give you the guidelines for what you have asked. 
And furthermore, we have uh, AI tools for coding that are integrated into the IDE. And now IDE is the platform or program in which we are coding. And such examples are GitHub Copilot and Amazon Whisperer. And this way we can work on our project and ask the AI a question and it will know what the context is. Okay, so um, now we've talked a little bit about uh, chatbots and AI, but what about coding with AI? Now, I think AI or you know artificial intelligence is completely changing how we would usually code and it definitely makes developers' lives a hell of a lot easier. Uh, so now with AI, you can actually leverage those tools to get help with writing the code so it can generate code samples within seconds in multiple languages, multiple frameworks. Um, you can also get help debugging your code and fixing errors. It can detect errors very quickly. You can, um, like uh, Ali and Abbott said, you can actually discuss it and get further help and questions. So it can actually be a conversation. You're, you shouldn't feel like you're alone uh, dealing with your own problems. It can help you understand code that you don't know, some complex algorithms, um, open source code. And I think it also makes learning how to code more, more accessible. Now everyone can just open ChatGPT and ask him to explain things or generate things, uh, making it a lot more accessible. Uh, so why is coding actually important? How is coding used in our daily lives? Why that should interest you? So basically coding is everywhere. Like just think about your regular daily routine now, how much of it actually relies on someone else's written code. So as I've said here, like from your alarm clock, driving a car, it basically powers everything you do in your daily life. You know, online shopping, streaming movies, home appliances, just everything. It's it's pretty much everywhere. So it's very hard to imagine a world without coding. And I think we should embrace coding and what it gives us. And learning how to code could definitely open a lot of doors in today's very um, tech-driven and advanced world. So I think we all have a lot to learn from it. Yeah, so uh, regarding the importance of AI in coding, we can see a few examples. So uh, first of all, efficiency in which AI can contribute to automation. Next, we have error correction in which AI can identify errors and solve them beforehand or fix an already standing problem, which led me to the next point, which is problem solving, not in a sense of bugs and errors, but more in the context of how to implement something. And finally, AI can be used for optimization of the code in a, in a manner that it's more readable and concise, so it takes less time to execute. Um, and here we have some examples for technology that utilize uh, AI. So we won't dive deep into those examples as, uh, and, and they are here just to give you a glimpse. Um, so first of all, neural networks, which are the basic methods of how AI learns and work. Um, these networks often implemented in Python and are using dedicated libraries. Uh, furthermore, we can use visualization tools and programs like MATLAB or basically the equivalent uh, library in Python, which is matplotlib, like MATLAB plot library. And lastly, in order for AI tools to make sense of sentences we write, it needs to use NLP, which stands for Natural Language Processing. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so about the tools and technologies um, about coding, uh, basically, with AI. So uh, as Cal mentioned, uh, we've got neural networks now. Um, AI is basically uh, built and very much based on neural networks. You basically have a machine, a computer, that eventually gets numbers. So you get a lot of data, but the data that we give it is actually then translated into numbers. And then you've got neural networks. Um, that work on that data. And then what the AI does is basically just predict the new word. So uh, we've got neural networks and um, 
It's especially important for things like deep learning applications. Now, I think as we already mentioned, deep learning helps with like things like speech recognition, image generation, and a lot more. It's basically the idea that you, you've got those numbers, you got this text, you convert it into numbers, and then you use neural networks to work with those numbers and get efficient results. Uh, you've also got the Python frameworks. So you've got Python libraries, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch for AI development. Um, I see a question. I, I think we'll talk about the question. We'll, we'll give time for questions at the end. Um, so we also have data visualization tools also uh, relating to what Taos talked about, uh, tools like Matplotlib, um, that all those tools basically help us visualize the AI data models uh, so that we can actually take that input and, and take the basically the results that AI give us and actually make something more meaningful out of it that we can um, understand better and use better for our advantage. And lastly, we have the virtual assistants. Uh, yeah, virtual assistants is something, it's probably the most uh, popular thing as of recent days. Uh, we all use them. It's, I think, maybe the most related to our presentation, how we use virtual assistants for like coding. Um, so yeah, we've got um, definitely those virtual assistants, ChatGPT, Gemini, et cetera, that are just thriving nowadays. Uh, so, okay, now I'll start talking a little about examples and how AI relates to me, how I usually use it in, I guess, my day-to-day -day, uh, life. So this first example is actually, relating to a task I have. I had an assignment in one of my courses and I needed to write code and basically see an assembly. Uh, it was a work in pairs. So this is actually code that my partner wrote and I wanted to kind of get a grasp on what it was doing. So I had, as you can see, these two uh, files, uh, one of C and one in assembly. We can move on to the next slide. Um, sure. So. I didn't really know what it was doing, and it's a pretty difficult code to understand. It's not the most, uh, these are not the most readable languages. So I remembered I have GitHub Copilot uh, on my CLAN, uh, which is the IDE that I use. And I just asked it, hey, can you explain to me the code in those two files? I didn't need to provide any further context because GitHub Copilot actually gets the context from your IDE, from the files that are opened in your IDE. And as you can see, I just got the answer. It was very, very structured. Um, it like divided the answers or um, divided his explanation to me by the different areas of responsibilities. So for each of the files, you can see for the C file, it actually divided it for the functions themselves. And for the assembly file, it actually divided it to different responsibilities of sections of my code. And down below, you can see that it actually gave me like a suggestion for a like follow-up question, but I can also add my follow-up questions on my own. And it also says using two references, which are the files that were opened in my ID. So it also shows me the references that it answered based on. So that, like this use case really saves a lot of time. Uh, we can move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, the second thing that I use, uh, the second very important use case is actually generating code, which I think it's, it's a pretty big one and it definitely saves a lot of time if you can just generate the code instead of writing everything yourself. So in this example, it actually relates to my first story. So the same assignment, but this is the part that I had to do. I wanted to generate tests for it. So I had to do basically a matrix multiplication and assembly, and I wanted to generate some tests to check if I did everything right. But for that test, I actually needed matrix multiplication uh, just in Python, because I wanted to write the test in Python. So instead of me writing the entire code, which is very repetitive, uh, very time consuming, I just Ask Gemini, hey, can you give me a Python script that does matrix multiplication? And so this is the result. And if we can move on to the next slide. Um, so yeah, I just took that code. I literally copied and pasted it uh, into my IDE. And as you can see with the result matrix, I basically got what I wanted. So it was just a click away um, and definitely saved me a lot of time. Um, so yeah, the next one, uh, our last example is um, bug detection. Now, this time I actually had a file, I had, an, I had an audio file that I wanted to split into different sections. It was actually part of a bigger thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, transcribe the file, but um, the free website that I found requires it to be a certain length of time uh, for it to be free. 
So I needed to split my audio file into different sections at that length of time so that I can send it to that program and it will be free for me. So I found an, a command online that does that. But then I try to make automation for it, just a simple function that I could input the segment duration and the file path, and it will just split my file according to the parameters. So I tried doing just that, uh, but then it just didn't work. And it gave me this strange, uh, strange bug, strange error, which I didn't understand. So I literally just took my section and I gave like the context to ChatGPT. And um, as you can see, it gave me a corrected solution. It gave me just the, the same command, basically, you give me the same function, just fixed. And it also tells you the changes that it did. And it kind of told me what my issue actually was in the code, which was very helpful because I don't know a lot of bash. And if we can move on to the next slide. Um, yeah, so I basically took the changes that it made, literally copied and pasted, changed my function. And then I ran it again. And as you can see, this time it did work. So I've got my ABC file, which was uh, my full full length file and I just split it into five different chunks and the size that I gave it. So it was uh, three minutes for this one, 180 seconds. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, so far we've talked about uh, the good things uh, about AI, but now we need to talk about some challenges and limitations. Um, so first, the AI engine is based on what he has gathered from the internet, and sometimes that can be problematic if the information acquired is not accurate or biased. Uh, the second issue is about plagiarism. Well, whoever developed the AI tool didn't pay attention, and a credit hasn't been given when it should have been. Uh, the third issue is about complexity, and the AI tools might not be able to understand and, and see the big picture, and hence struggle with giving uh, the right uh, solution for the problem. Um, the future of AI focuses on many things, some of which are making the algorithms more readable and easier to understand. Uh, others would like to make life and tasks easier by incorporating AI more and let it help even more than it does today in coding. And third, as we have just seen in the previous slide, well, uh, might be some ethical problems such as plagiarism, and we would like to enhance the focus on ethics in AI. And to conclude this presentation, as we have seen, AI is expanding and changing basically every day and has influenced the, the way we code. Okay, so um, yeah, definitely. And I would also like to add a few words. So I think it definitely influences and changes the way we code. It's definitely a great opportunity and there are advantages, there are disadvantages. AI is not perfect as Tal have mentioned. Um, it's got its challenges that we definitely need to stay aware of and um, pay attention to, like data bias, accidental plagiarism, and a lot more. It's not perfect. It's not working 100% of the time. But I think it's definitely a tool. It's definitely an aid. And, and that's how I think we should look at it. And that's how we should use it. And if we really take it for what it is, I think it can offer us a lot in the long term. I think we could definitely leverage those tools. Uh, we can use it to automate tasks that are very repetitive and time consuming in our daily life. I think it can reduce your coding errors and improve your efficiency. Um, one very big use case is actually just, you can paste your code uh, into ChatGPT or uh, AI of your choice, and it will tell you how you can optimize your code. Um, you can get uh, enhanced abilities in terms of problem solving, um, code optimization, as I said, but problem solving, Sometimes they're very complex problems and it's still not perfect in handling those problems, but it can definitely give you a nudge, I think, in the right direction. So overall, I think we should embrace it. We should take it for what it is and we should get the help we need to make us become better versions of ourselves in terms of code. And we can also use it generally in life to become better versions of ourselves and everything. Uh, we can definitely use that assistance that it gives us. Um, so yeah. I think it's time if everyone has any questions, tell maybe you have something to add. No, just to see, I, I'm not seeing the chat. Uh, so <laughs> if we... Uh, I think I also don't really see it. 
Thank you very much. Perfect timing, guys. Amazing ideas and eye-opening, I mean, to all of us probably, especially not those who are from the coding world like myself, but it still is very, very interesting. And your examples were brilliant. So thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, and the, yeah, we have a question in the chat, but maybe we can address it towards the end. Let's see that we have enough questions for all of the students and the next presentation is scheduled to begin right now. So let me invite the next two speakers, Alara and Ayman, who will talk about uh, the use of AI in entertainment. Now even more people can relate, uh, maybe, uh, how you can actually uh, leverage AI in your content creation, uh, in social media, and sometimes, you know, you don't have to be those people who post and, and create, and uh, but we are all part of the world where this is, this is happening, so we need to be aware of what's going on and what is about to happen in the future. So, Lara Ayman, please take the floor, the floor is yours, you can share your screen, and um, yeah, let's begin. Yeah, thank you. So just a minute, I'm sharing. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so hello everyone. I'm Lara and um, I'm 25 years old, uh, industrial engineering student at Technion. And um, I actually work as an OPEX student at this company that's um, um it's like for a business and something like that and i'm also a partner at a startup um a new startup actually and i am um the manager of the marketing and all the social media in this in the our startup so um yes and ayman hi hi i'm 25 years 25 years old uh, from akko israel uh, Computer science students uh, in the Technion work at Intel uh, as a debug uh, platform and uh, validation. Okay, so let's actually start. <laughs> um, so, can AI unlock a new era of creativity in content creation? Well, actually, um, we'll be diving into an exciting journey on how AI is opening up a new paths of for creativity in making content from music, movies, games, and personal, personal stuff. AI is not just a tool, it's like a creative partner. So let's see how this magic actually happens. Well, AI as a collaborator, imagine having a creative partner that's available 24 seven, ready to offer a fresh perspective or suggest new ideas. So actually that's AI. It's not here to take over the creative process, but to enhance it, to push us beyond our usual, usual boundaries. Will AI help us uh, see patterns that we might miss? suggest so an uh, alternation you might not consider and even inspire new forms of art. Um, I'll just show you a short video. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? <clears throat> well, okay. I hope that was interesting for you. Let's go back to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
Let's take. Okay, so um, AI in music will, in the real name of music, AI is like a multi instrument uh, prodigy capable of composing original pieces, analyzing complex musical patterns, and generating unique melodies that resonate with human emotions. Well, actually, it's not talent. Uh, the talent, it doesn't actually stop here. AI algorithm also enhancing the way we are experiencing music, from improving sound quality to mixing audios for that perfect immersive experience. Uh, well, behind the scenes, AI streamless music production, making editing, uh, mastering, and post-processing. Uh, more efficient than ever. So this is, isn't just about making music production easier. It's actually about opening door to new sounds and experience while making the impossible now actually possible. So I have another video I want you to see. Here's an AI music generator that might change the music industry. Save this video and try it out for yourself. This one is called Sound Raw. Simply create music, select your mood, let's go for epic, narrow it down to a genre, pick a tempo, choose what instruments you want and don't want. Now you have all of this AI generated music. You can even mute and unmute the stems of the actual generated music. Now imagine this in 10 years time. This could be a great starting point for producers like me or you. Or this AI technology might just wipe out all of us. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now it's stuck. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, <laughs> let's continue like this. So I hope you see the screen well yeah. mm -hmm. for now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's about the music. So now let's do a transition to movies. So AI influence doesn't stop with music, actually. The same technology that uh, is revolutionizing the way we compose and experience tune is also transform transforming the silver screen. From script writing to uh, special effects, AI is playing a cruel role in how stories come to life in movies. Uh, so actually it's an exciting time to be part of this creative evolution where AI is not just behind the scenes helper, but a uh, core element of storytelling and visual storytelling. Now let's take a closer look how AI is making its mark in the movie industry. So actually in the movie world, AI has become, um, oh, well, actually let's see the video first and then we'll dive in. Okay, just one minute, I'm sorry about that. Maybe I'll just stop sharing and do sharing once again because it's stuck for me. <clears throat> I'm really sorry about this. Yes. So now we have it. And then we'll be. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. Citizens are advised to take the following steps. system 
Wow, an AI generated movie trailer. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so basically, basically what you saw is actually made by AI. So AI in the movie world has become a invaluable co-creator uh, assisting in generating script that capture the audience imagination and predicting which stories will resonate the most from visual effects once limited by human capability and time constraints are now enhanced by AI. So allowing for a life like uh, CGI and scene enhancement that were once thought impossible. Furthermore, AI uh, simplifies the interact process of Post production, uh, streamlining, editing, color grading, and the uh, integration of special effects. So actually, this enables filmmaker to push the envelope of storytelling, creating more engaging and visual stunning films that um, captive audience worldwide. So um, as AI continues to define the boundaries of creativity in music movies, its impact. Uh, is equally transformative in other domains like video games and personalized concept content. So let's explore further with my co-presenters, Ayman Kuroju. Hi, thanks. So diving in, uh, in video games. Uh, I as the architect behind the, the census, designing the video games and worlds of video, video games. Uh, most of video games today use uh, physics engines that use AI to make the games more re realistic. So, uh, so you will feel more connected to it, it's more realistic, you will enjoy it more. Also, it used that analyst and the player behavior uh, analyst to adapt the game to yourself. So you feel that the game's adapting itself for you. So. It's uh, improving the uh, the environment, the uh, response of the player or uh, the character behavior in the game, so you get the full and the uh, and the best uh, gaming experience. Also, in uh, this era of AI, you can create your games, also your video games. If you have an uh, idea of a, of a video game, some rules, you can uh, get an. Uh, Gaming AI engines that create the game for you. We can see here in the video, Lara, you can share it. So, an, uh, an engine like that, you can create so a game. This company recently it. announced that. To start it now? Yeah. So, this company recently announced that anyone can make a game without writing a line of code and earn extra income well that's the sandbox's game maker simply download game maker create your own imaginary world publish your game and see how much players like your game if they're spending time playing and coming back for more you're going to earn sand reward based on your game's engagement basically you're getting paid for building the metaverse and the better the experience the more you can earn no coding, no problem. Just create, publish, and watch the engagement and rewards roll in. So if we see if you have an idea of a game, rule, any environment you want for a game, you can, uh, today you can create and play it. Also you share it with your friends and play together. So moving to the uh, next slide. Uh, AI in social media. So today we use uh, social, uh, AI in everything. As mentioned, uh, Ali and uh, Karen uh, earlier, we can use AI in coding and uh, in studying. We can use it also in social media. We can improve our profiles, make it uh, more attractive, and uh, it helps the influencer know their followers and uh, create the content for them. Uh, also, uh, for example, creating uh, videos, as we saw earlier, you can uh, create videos and uh, maybe a, a background music for the video share or something like that. You can create it by yourself, by AI. Uh, writing, also by chat, uh, maybe chat GPT for writing uh, issue, grammar, something like that. Uh, also, social media, uh, we use social media for marketing. 
so uh, it can know the followers uh, so you can uh, create uh, the ad or the market you know which products your followers need and uh, that's how you use it also for memes also if if you have a fan page you want uh, to share memes you can share memes uh, that created by ai you share the idea or the subject you want to make the meme of and uh, it makes for makes it for you. As we see in the next slide, we have a meme that creates uh, the meme creates by uh, AI. So yeah, we can use it. Uh, personalize the content accommodation as uh, I mentioned earlier in social media, you uh, you can uh, know your uh, your audience and then uh, create ads uh, that targeted them and attract them uh, to the uh, to your product. Also, in a, not on not only social media. Let's talk uh, about Netflix, for example. Uh, it do data anal analysis of your uh, watching history, and she know what to offer, what to watch list, uh, what to, to watch next. So it's uh, enhanced uh, the user uh, experience, make the marketing more uh, targeted. So you don't see ads that uh, doesn't, uh, you don't want them. Uh, we can always say it when they, if you are thinking about something, you enter social media or your phone and you say ad of it. So that's also using AI to learn that. Also. Uh, so uh, ethical consideration uh, of course with the great uh, the great power comes great responsibility uh, with we we should uh, take care of you Oh, I think Ayman just uh, got disconnected. Something happened to the internet. Lara, do you want to conclude to go to the next slide then? And we'll wait for Ayman to come back. Yes, just a minute. <clears throat> okay, it's back again. Um, okay. So... Um, so in in conclusion for what we said, actually there is two more slides, but it's for Ayman's part. <laughs> uh, I hope you will be back in a few minutes, in a few seconds, actually. <laughs> so um, actually I wanted to ask, like when uh, we'll just take a, say a, a small conversation, like, okay. Um, so I hope to know how much do you like the presentation that we made today? like. The presentation itself uh, from one to ten. Can you write me in chat, please? Yeah, what do you think about the design of the slides? Sorry. Yes. Sure, I have a connection uh, yeah, issue yeah, with my computer. Back. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for coming back. Uh, <laughs> audience, please respond in the chat. How uh, do you rate uh, the student slides? Uh, Lara and I don't just asked you. Uh, what do you think about the slides that they produced? You... <laughs> okay, I see a lot of tens. <laughs> nice. Okay, very very okay, thank you. So, all in all. Yeah. Okay, great. So what's interesting is that um, all this presentation and design is actually made by AI. <laughs> it's not made um, by us. Like we we did uh, write for AI what we want actually and how it, what we want it to be designed, but all of it was made also by AI. So this is also interesting. Um, so Ayman, do you want to continue from where you were? So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope that it was uh, exciting and uh, and uh, uh, to learn new uh, tools to use AI and uh, 
يعني هو ايه رعب في اي have any question or something like that <clears throat> Lara, do you want to add anything to finish? So, um, so yeah, in conclusion, AI is really um like a friend, as we said in the beginning. It's not a tool that um came to replace us or to replace a uh, human or uh, or anything. It just came as a friend to help us be more creative and do more things that will be really uh will lead to great uh, things in the future, especially mm -hmm. in marketing and in uh, all the social media and this uh, this entertainment work. So I hope you liked our presentation and thank you for listening. Thank you. We'll make our life just easier. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are moving on to the last presenter today. We started off with the uh, the student uh, life uh, use case of how students needed to handle their busy uh, life schedule and stress and, and have someone or something to ask questions. And now they do have that tool. We discussed the coding world and then moved on to the to everything else in life, basically starting from music and movies and social media, marketing, content creation, whatnot, right? Now we're moving on to the last talk and you're wondering what else can AI have influence on? And here Almog will now share his screen. Um, Almog, you're next. Hi. Talking about war and peace. Can you see me and see Hi. my screen? <laughs> yeah, okay. The last presenter, welcome Almog. You can begin, thank you. Okay, so can everybody hear me and see me and see my screen? We can see your screen. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're already off to a good start. So let's begin. So my name is Almog. I'm a student for also uh, computer science and math, but the topic for this discussion is going to be something a little bit different, a bit to expand your view of the world, hopefully. Um, so the topic of this conversa conversation will be um, AI in Africa a tool of war and peace. And this is not just a title, we're actually going to discuss um, usages of AI, both for war purposes and for peace purposes. So let's begin. Um, firstly, an introduction to, do, do we have any anyone from Africa in this, in this uh, meeting? Probably not. Yeah. If anyone right in the chat, it'd be nice to know. Okay, so introduction. So Africa is known for being a continent going through many hardships, especially in the last two centuries, wars, military coups, and a lot of foreign interference, but also lately, a lot of economic development, um, a vast amount of human diversity and also natural diversity. And with the arrival of artificial intelligence in the last two decades, or even only the last decade, um, things have been changing, changing for the better, for the better in some areas and changing for the worse, unfortunately, in some areas. But let's start with the with the good part. So AI as a tool for peace in Africa. Um, okay, so we will discuss six different examples: um, cataract treatment, agriculture, the workforce, education, arts, and lastly, finding water with AI. Okay, so let's let's begin with um, using AI for cataract treatment. So cataract, for people who don't know, is um, an eye condition which affects almost every single person after a certain age and causes them to be practically blind and unable to function in life from a certain stage of the disease. And in the West, there are surgeries who can solve this problem fairly simply, but they are very expensive and not available in Africa. And using AI and advanced methods, um, as you can see in the picture here, they, are, they have been developing very interesting new apps and systems um, that can very easily and cheaply improve vision for, for people who are suffering from that disease and changing millions of life for the better. So let's continue. Okay, using AI for agriculture. So agriculture is the largest source of revenue for most of sub-Saharan Africa. It's the main contributor to all the job markets and the economy in general, imports and exports. 
And Africa also has the world's largest amount of uncultivated farmland still available to use. And many countries, governments, and foreign aid organizations have been using AI um, to help grow food, improve and optimize food growth, food production, um, irrigation, farmland, um, managing and all of that. And also it helping a lot with ending starvation and um, various issues stemming from that across the continent. Okay, so AI in the workforce. Um, high tech is something which began obviously in the West, but it's now making an, its entry into Africa. Um, and specifically Google launched an AI research lab in Accra, the capital of Ghana. And in 2018, so it's early usage of AI considered. And since then, the, the, the main focus of this research center has been to solve problems which are most relevant within Africa itself. So um, issues such as uh, childbirth, uh, helping in the workforce, health issues, um, maternal mortality, food insecurity, all very relevant and actual issues that exist in Africa and AI has been used for doing good and for helping with that. Um, education, also something which is very important. Um, education is considered to be the main avenue for ending, for solving pro poverty all across the world, but specifically in Africa as well. And AI and computers and artificial intelligence and bots help a lot even today, but also looking into the future um, with helping teachers learning from distances. Some, some places in Africa, they're very large countries and students have to walk for kilometers just to get to school, which is obviously not ideal. And with the utilization of AI, it, it's helping learning online, um, distance learning, personalized learning and improving the efficiency of education, which is something which for the next generation of young Africans will be of major help. Okay, now let's move on to the arts. So the art culture in Africa is very diverse, one of the most diverse in the world. And AI is helping artists from all across the continent to improve their ability to spread their art, to self-express their artistic op opinions, to change the uh, culture and even sometimes political situations through art and music. Um, like we saw in the last uh, presentation, AI is, can be of major help, even something which is as natural as can be like music. And growing usage of AI with the availability of smartphones, internet connection is causing a major boom in African art, as you can see in the picture that I included. And lastly, and maybe even most importantly, is finding water with AI. Water is the source of, of all life. And without water, living is difficult. And not only without water, but without clean water, it can cause major major, major issues for um, people who don't have access to it. And AI can be used to find water, to clean water, to Im improve the uh, transportation of water, uh, irrigation, pipelines, and all of that. And an example here is a major aquifer found in the border between South Africa and Botswana, um, flowing through a large river system called the Limpopo and in, in Southern Africa. And this specific aquifer has been used to export water to Mozambique, which is a country which is troubled by civil war and due to that has major water shortages. And with AI, finding this water, cleaning the water and transporting the water has become something which is realistic and cheaper and much more manageable for countries and companies which deal in that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some more um, unfortunate uh, side of things. And I think this is where, actually, I want to point out how is this relevant to students um, and even teachers who use AI, who may in the future be the ones developing AI. With all the good, with all the happiness, um, anything can be exploited to to do harm, to, to cause trouble, to kill people, to do whatever. So if you create a tool, you have to take into account that it can be used to do bad things and do your best to, to avoid that. Okay, so I created a map based on various sources online of the impact of AI on conflicts across Africa. So three countries only, unfortunately, 
Egypt, Kenya, and Mauritius have deployed AI task forces like as government entities to, to sustain peace, to, to avoid wars. Um, and more countries such as Nigeria, Ethiopia, Uganda, Rwanda, South Africa have plans to develop such national AI strategies to, again, avoid the tools getting into hand of um, less than good people. And now moving on to the red, uh, we have countries where AI is restricted by the government for government use only in civil war or other ethnic conflicts in the case of Eritrea. And, and in the dark red countries, which we'll talk about some of them, AI is unfortunately actively being used in, in recent civil wars. Okay, so we'll start with the case of the Central African Republic, um, a country which has since getting independence suffered a few civil wars and unfortunately very slow economic development. And recently it has come to the to worldwide news attention for being the first country in Africa to use AI in, in civil conflict. So in, AI has been a, a tool used by a Russian mercenary group called Wagner Group, later renamed Africa Corps after the death of its late leader, Evgeny Prigozhin. And the Central African Republic has been the first country in Africa to import these mercenaries and um, use their AI capabilities and other high-tech advanced tools to cause chaos across the country, killing more than 10,000 people and displacing millions, unfortunately. Um, so the government forces of President Faustano Shams Tuadera um, are the ones who called in the help of the Wagner Group, which has since utilized various AI-capable drones and missiles, and um, even, unfortunately, identifying people based on ethnic origin. And due to that, the government forces of Tuadera's uh, loyal soldiers have, have managed to, to bring the war to a more stable situation, um, crushing the rebel forces. And the, it's in red on the map here, gaining control of most of the major, major cities in the north, including Ndele and Birao, which have been the strongholds of the self-declared rebel country of Lugone. So when, I, when AI is being used in a war, sometimes it brings an unfair advantage to the side using it, killing a lot of people, but ending the war. Okay, so now let's move on to the country of Madagascar. So the uh, the Malagasy society has been known for suffering from major corruption. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world, unfortunately. And lately, uh, an interesting phenomenon has been using AI to steal elections, which have brought Madagascar to the brink of civil war back in 2018. So again, we have the usage of Wagner mercenaries, um, the, they arrived in Madagascar in April 2019 to help incumbent President Harry Marshall Rajanariman Pianina win re-election. Um, he had very little support among the populace and much like Roshan Stoderav, the Central African Republic, claimed to have used Wagner and AI tools as a last resort because no other country was willing to help him. Despite that, he only managed to get less than 9% of the vote, ending his political career and leaving the, the country in a brink of civil war. Okay, so now we'll move on to our last example, which will be South Sudan. Um, South Sudan is the poorest country on earth. And after fighting for independence for almost 50 years, it again um, traveled into civil war in 2013, only two years after gaining, gaining independence. Um, and th this war only ended in 2020 after the government forces um, with support from Israel managed to crush most of the rebels and effectively end the war. Um, the war originally broke out between forces loyal to President Salva Kiir Mayardit and against forces loyal to his vice president. And this conflict, unfortunately, was so brutal that even Russia and Wagner declined to get involved. And with the civil war being in a stalemate for almost seven years, uh, President Salva Kiir came for Israel's help one of his only international allies, which has been aiding him since 1969. Um, and after he was utilizing advanced Israeli weapons and in less than a year, using AI drones and other advanced equipment, uh, the, the SPLA forces managed to, again, with an unfair advantage, bring the war to a close as early as 2020. 
And this is an image from a protest in Israel against arming the Sudan People's Liberation Army, the SPLA. Okay, so this has been a short overview of the situation. And with the remaining minutes, we'll do a Kahoot. Um, so I bought a Kahoot for, I paid $20 to buy for 50 people and we're 43, so it works great. So if can anybody see the, the code, you can join and we'll start in a few minutes. I think you can click on the game pin and it gives you the link and you can drop it in the chat. You see it, copy link to share, click on it and drop it in the chat. Yeah, you can also just go to Kahoot and Kahoot.com yeah. and but just it's easier for click, people uh, to click uh, in the chat so you can just share. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I sent it in the chat. Thank but you can also just type the pin manually. The pin is on my screen. So we have 12 people. We'll wait to get to... Hopefully most of you will join. So it will be diverse questions and I hope it will be fun. And of course, so we'll see the winner at the end, and the winner will get a very special prize. <laughs> and and you you have to cancel your registration. Oh my god, you should have told me. I I I have a paid account for Kahoot. No, that's only twenty dollars. <laughs> okay, so please join. We want more participants. Okay. The link is in the chat and then sometimes it keeps people out so maybe let's begin um and if you want to uh just write your name click on the link and write your name and then you can also respond in the chat if you are not uh, very tiny. okay so I, I see someone is having trouble with joining so go yeah. to google you can, you can answer in the chat i know i know the person it's okay we can i will uh, yeah, but for, for anyone, just go, to, if you're not familiar with this program, go to just type Kahoot in Google and then type the game pin, which you can see on my screen, and then you can choose your name and you'll join and you'll be in the game. The game is like a quiz, it's questions. I, I love the fascinating uh, presentation. I think everyone were just was just, uh, wow, if anyone wants to unmute themselves, just say a few words by the, during the time we are... Um, gathering here yeah i hear some reactions on this on this on the people's screens and this is also the time for us to uh open the cameras if you're there and you can open your camera so it can take a screenshot for uh to towards the end of the conference of all of the participants that are still here thank you very much for staying up until the end and thank you for sharing your faces good to see you all is anyone else having trouble with joining or can we begin? I think we should begin. Okay. So we'll start. I'll read the questions and you will have 20 seconds to answer each question. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What does the Google Research Center in Africa focus on for using AI? For those who don't remember, Google built a research center in Accra, Ghana's capital, and it is focusing on two main issues which are affecting people across the African continent. Three seconds left. You have to answer quickly. Okay. So the two main issues are food insecurity and maternal mortality, which is during childbirth, unfortunately, mothers are dying. And some people got correct. Good job. We have AI participating in the audience. <laughs> Which country utilized AI in civil war? South Sudan, Madagascar, South Africa, or the Central African Republic? The Central African Republic is called Ubangishari for French speakers or in many other countries. Okay, so two correct answers, South Sudan and Central African Republic. 
Madagascar, not for a civil war, but for, for stealing elections. How can AI improve access to eye care in Africa? So we talked about cataract surgeries and bring new doctors, leverage machine learning algorithms, automate tasks, or find water. Five seconds left. Okay. Okay. So these are the two correct answers. Good job. Who did the government forces of the Central African Republic import from? UN peacekeepers, NATO forces, the Wagner Group, or Libya? Okay, so many people got it correct, good job. True or false? Is AI being used to improve access, diagnosis, and treatment outcomes of eye diseases in Africa? Okay, most of you got it correct, good job. What is the impact of AI on conflicts in Africa? Push for peace talks, guide attacks against civilians, securing elections, or none of the above? Okay, some of you got it correct. It's mainly used for guiding attacks against civilians. We have Abed is in the lead currently. Good job. And next after him is Elena. Okay. What is the percentage of Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP contributed by agriculture? This is a difficult question because I only mentioned it for a second. But it's a slider, so you have to pick the most accurate answer you can think of. Okay. What does AI have the potential to do for African agriculture? Help government taxation, create solutions, revolutionize farming, or cataract treatment? Okay, good job. Who claimed to have used the Wagner militias as a last resort? President Francois Chance Chaudera, President Rajan Riman Pianina, Salva Kiir, or Francois Bojage? Bojage. Correct. Both Twadera and Rajan Ariman Pianina have used Wagner mercenaries and AI tools as a last resort. Um, one of them successfully, the other one less so. How can AI amplify African art? And poverty leverage African AI algorithms by replacing other jobs or by diversifying voices? Okay. What is the main source of revenue for many households in Sub-Saharan Africa? Workforce, agriculture, education, or arts?
Good job. Which president sought, sought help for Wagner mercenaries in Madagascar? Salva Kiyom Ayardi, Tariq Mahar, Fosana Shams Tualera, or Harry Marshall Rajan Ariman Pianina? Okay, so in Madagascar, it's Rajan Ariman Pianina, Salva Kiyom is of South Sudan. How can AI help manage water resources in Africa? All answers are correct. Optimize resource allocation, create more rain or end wars. Good job. Who helped South Sudan government forces win the civil war? Israel, Russian mercenaries, Wagner Group, or rebel forces? Hey, okay, good job. What does AI, AI have the potential to do for education in Africa? We'll give 10 seconds for each question because we have to finish. So we'll go a little quicker. So we speed up. Yeah, not okay. only in Africa, in all the world, right? AI and education and revolutionize learning. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many wars have the Central African Republic been in since 2000? Again, I'm only giving 10 seconds because we have to finish. So put in your answers quickly. Okay. One more. Which country used AI to manipulate elections in Madagascar? Israel, Russia, Madagascar, or South Sudan? Okay, Russia is correct. Last five questions. What potential does AI have in improving eye care in Africa? This might be a little tricky. Okay, most of you did it correct. Which country gained independence from, from Sudan in 2011? That's an easy one. Of course, South Sudan. Last three questions. What is AI used for in the African workforce? Agriculture, education, cataract treatment, or self-driving cars? Okay, good job. How long did the civil war in the Central African Republic last? Talked about it for a second, so it's a difficult question. Correct, 11 years, good job. Last two questions. How can AI amplify our African artistic voices? Okay, and our last question for today, what is the main cause of the conflict in the Central African Republic? Russian mercenaries, clashes between loyal forces, use of AI or rebel forces? And 
the main cause as rebel forces, AI was a tool for ending the war. So let's see the podium, who won? In third place, we have Vladislav. Well done, thank you so much for your- Second place, we have Yuri. And first <laughs> place, we have- I think our own Abed. Abed, wow. Congratulations, everyone, excellent. Runner-ups, we have player in fourth place and AI in fifth place. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying uh, and a little bit longer than planned. Really, really uh, amazing new information. Uh, very, very impressive, guys. Thank you very much. And we are finishing this conference today. And we are going to invite you to our second round in August. So please stay tuned for the next student conference in August. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Uh, bye from Israel. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. The same to you. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. It was great. Thank you very much.